Hello my dear students, welcome to our arts lesson in quarter 2. And our most essential learning competencies are Number 1. Analyzes the elements and principles of art in the production of one's arts and crafts inspired by the arts of Mimarupa and the Visayas. Identifies the characteristics of arts and crafts in specific areas in Mimarupa and the Visayas, Moranduki, Palawan, Benduro, Cebu, Iloilo, Samar, and etc. Number three, appreciates the artifacts and art objects in terms of its utilization and its distinct use of art elements and principles. Number four, reflects on and derive the mood, idea, or message emanating from selected artifacts and art objects. And the last one is number five, Create crafts that can be locally assembled with local materials guided by local traditional techniques. So in this lesson, you will be guided how are the elements and principles of arts being applied from the different arts and crafts of the Mimarupa and of the Visayas Island. Remember that today's class, you are required to analyze, identify, appreciate, reflect, and create about the arts and crafts of Menduro, Marinduque, Rumblon, Palawan, and some island of the Visayas. So are you ready? Let's explore and review our elements and principles of arts and design. think is the common thing that you can notice? Yes, it's line. And artwork are made up of different lines. Each of these pictures shows similar thing, but one main idea that differentiates them is how the artist used lines in that artwork. Line is one of the seven elements of arts. Among them are the shape, color, texture, form, value, and space. These seven elements are the building blocks of all art and are a great way to start in analyzing or interpreting a work of art. Line is a point created when one object moves from one point to another. In the visual art, line can be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, straight, curve, or freeform. They can be thick or thin, light or dark. Sometimes, when line can be all of this thing, it will create an art. What quality do you see in this line? How would you describe them? Every artist has its unique way of applying these lines. It's one way of expressing our individual style. The next element of the art is the shape. When the beginning of a line connects with its own ends or intersect along with another, it creates shape. Shapes are enclosed in two-dimensional space. That means depth, 
length, and width. They are always flat. There are countless shapes that we can divide into two main categories. Geometric shapes and organic shapes. Geometric shapes can be determined mathematically. They are known as regular shapes. They always have a specific name such as circle, square, or rectangle and they can be often seen in nature. The second category of shape is the organic shape. It can be found in the nature like leaves or water. They are irregular, really curvy. We have names for specific organic shapes such as stars, moon, or heart, but most of them doesn't have a name. The third element of art is the color. Color is created when light strikes an object and reflects back into your eyes. All colors comes from the three primary colors and it can also be seen in black and white. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. You can now make a primary color. Primary colors are mixed together to create another color, like the secondary colors. The secondary colors are combinations of two of the primary colors in equal amounts. Red plus yellow equals orange. Yellow plus blue equals green and blue plus red equals purple. Tertiary colors are combination of primary color and secondary color. When you are making a tertiary color, the primary color is always named first, such as red-orange and yellow-orange. Altogether, they form a color wheel. The color wheel organized a color. The circle shows the relationship between the colors. The next element is the texture. Texture is something that feels or looks like, or as if you might feel, as if it was touched. The feelings of textures are hard or soft, rough or smooth, matte or glossy. Texture can be actual or implied. You can create a texture for a person to actually feel on the artwork surface. Or you can use drawing technique to make a flat artwork appear to be textured. Another element of art is the form. Form must have a height width and depth. It's three-dimensional. There are two types of form, the geometric form and the organic form. The geometric form has a specific name such as cone, cubes, or pyramid. They are typically man-made. 
while the organic form don't have a specific names. Forms can be created in actual or implied way. In actual way, some freestanding sculpture taking three-dimensional space so they can be viewed from any angle. And for the implied way, some other sculpture consists of sculptural three-dimensional elements attached to a solid background. Another element of art is the value. Value is how light or dark a color looks like. It is used to break an object like a three-dimensional. The value scale shows you the value of white to black. Tint is a color mixed of white. So we can see red becomes pink and blue becomes light blue. In value, there is also shade. Shade is a color mixed with black. Tone is also present in value because tone produced by mixing a color with gray. See? You can change the value of the color through tinting, shading, and toning. And the last element of art is space. Space is the area where artwork is placed. It can be within an artwork like a drawing or a painting and also contains surrounding area of artwork. There are three types of space. We have the positive, negative, and white. Positive space is created in the areas that are occupied by an object. And the negative space can be seen around the object. And the white space are created space between the objects. Using the space of the object is what we call composition. Depending on how you use the space, we can fill it. It's either a crowded, open, orderly, chaotic, or playful. Artist uses several techniques to create the illusions of space within the two-dimensional artwork. Relative size, varying use and values. Contrast of focus and blur. Overlapping, different placement. And the use of one or two perspective gives the three-dimensional of space. Perspective is a volume of space or three-dimensional object on a flat surface. On a parallel line, extend from an object and meet together on a horizontal line that is a vanishing point. A drawing has a one-point perspective when it contains only one vanishing point on a horizontal line. A two-point perspective uses two vanishing points on a horizontal line. And we can create now something interesting artwork through various activities. 
The Principles of Arts and Designs Number 1 is the Rhythm Rhythm is the repetition of the elements of art and pattern. Rhythm is made when something in the artwork repeats itself to create a pattern. Notice how the artist uses a series of black and white shapes to create a spiral pattern in this artwork. Number two is the emphasis. Emphasis is one part of an artwork is dominant over other parts. To use emphasis is to create a strong difference in one part of the artwork compared to the other parts. This artist used a different color to set one object apart from the others. The third one is the balance. Balance equalizing visual forces or elements in an artwork. We have three different types of balance. Number one is the symmetrical balance. Number two, the asymmetrical balance. And number three is the radial balance. Symmetrical balance is when objects in the artwork are balanced evenly. The second balance is the asymmetrical balance. It is when objects are balanced unevenly. And the last one is the radial balance. It is when objects are balanced in a circular or radial manner. In this artwork, the artist creates an artwork that is both symmetrical and radial. The objects are evenly positioned side to side and they even to be creating a circular movement. Proportion and unity in art is how the element of pieces is combined to create balance and harmony. In order to achieve this unity of art, there must be the balance and harmony with the seven elements of art. Unity can be achieved through repetitive and simplicity. Unity is like a visible clue. It would tell the pieces that they belong together. Example of unity includes shape, pattern, and contrast. Pattern is the consistent repetition of the elements with a composition of art. It must be consistent, exact repetition in order for it to be pattern. The next principle of art is contrast. Contrast is extreme. It's an opposite. The bigger the difference between the two things, the higher the contrast. It's just like there's an up and down. Far or near, loud or soft. The last principle is the movement. In visual, movement is used by the artist to direct the viewer through the artwork. It can be directed along lines, edges, shapes, and color. Movement is the design principles that uses some of the elements of art to produce the look of action or to convey the viewer's eye to sweep over the work of a certain manner. So now, that's how the elements of arts and principles of arts and designs connects with our lessons for today. Do you love art? Have you ever dreamed of becoming an artist? Art has been a part of our lives for as long as humanity has existed. For thousands of years, people have been creating, looking, criticizing, and enjoying art. This video class would like to address three questions. What is art? What is its purpose? And why has it survived for this long? The Arts and Crafts of Mimaropa Region Mimaropa is an administrative region consists entirely of island provinces located in the southwestern Luzon. The term Mimaropa is a combination of the names of its constituent provinces namely Menduro, Marinduque, Rumblon, and Palawan. And now, 
Let's start studying the arts and crafts of Menduro. Ambahan is a traditional poetry of the Hanuno Mangyans in Menduro. It is a traditional written with a point of a knife on a piece of bamboo using the centuries old pre-Spanish syllabic script called Surat Mangyan. Once the letters has been cut, they took a handful of ash and rubbed it into the thinly curved letters to make them stand out more clearly. Ano, yung pong surat mang yan, uh... Kasi nung araw, wala, uh, hindi kami marunong talaga, mag, walang pinag-aralan ang mga katutubo. So yun lang ang parang yung, yung surat mang yan, ito yung kinaugalian namin na natutunan namin mula sa aming mga ninuno. Yung sa aming lola, lolo. Doon ang gamit namin yan, tulad sa mga binatak dalaga. Ano, halimbawa, ang... Kasintahan mo eh, ang lumpas siya sa mga kapila, yung sulat lang ang pinapadala sa isang tao na iabot doon. Yun ay ginagamit namin sa pagsusulat ng ambahan. Minsan, ginagamit din namin sa pakikipagkaibigan ng bawa sa isang kaibigan mo pwedeng magpadala ng konting sulat. Pero karamihan na ginagamit namin ay sa ambahan talaga yon doon nakalaan talaga yung maraming gamit ng sulat ng mga. So yung ambahan po ay itong parang isang awit ng mga katutubo na mayaman sa sa kahulugan. Ito po yun ay ginagamit minsan kung halimbawa may gustong may ibig ipahiwatig yung isang tao doon sa isang tao, halimbawa sa pagliligawan. So pwede siyang magambahan uh, tungkol sa kanyang nililigawan kung ano yung mensahe na gusto niyang iparating. No awa awa di man awa di kang sabungan magpadag wedding ban unhono sab araw man so yung inambunan ban say inagwadan kita da di magambahan Basket weaving is the main source of income in Puerto Galera, Mindoro. They use nito, which refers to the special vine that grows in the wild. They make only what the earth allows because nito vine cannot be cultivated or planted, ensuring the earth-friendly and sustainable nature of their art. Each nito woven item is one of a kind with no single design being exactly the same as the other. A large basket takes roughly one week to complete. Activity 1. Choose one Tagalog term and write on the bamboo image its translation, representation using the Surat Mangyan characters. Activity 2. Designs the basket using geometric shapes similar to the Irayo Mangyan's pattern. Now let's proceed to the arts and craft of Marinduque. The Mariones Festival in Marinduque is a much-awaited Lenten tradition that is celebrated every Holy Week. Moryun means masks that are made from wood or paper mache, adorned with colorful shells, animal hairs, tassels, and creep papers. People who act as Roman soldiers during the festival wear their masks together with their vests, capes, and wooden shields. Yung lulo din po niyan. Pang apat na po ako. Ano ba yun? Nag-aral ka ba ng sabihin natin? Sculpture, art, ganyan sa sila? Hindi naman po. Talagang nakatuon lang po yung kung ko sa kitatay na tumulong po ako sa kanya para at least tuloy-tuloy ito. Eh ako din po mawala itong ko na ito. Pero mano-mano rin yan. Oo, mano-mano lahat po. Wala na, ang makina lang po sa akin, pagpintura. Sabi ko habang nakakapag-ukit ako, tuloy-tuloy ang pag-ukit. Para hindi mawala dito sa Marinduque itong tradisyon na ito. Tuloy-tuloy na. 
Kailangan may ma... Kailangan may mapalit. Ako po si Agrippina Luna, 84 taon. 1989 ako nagsimula ng pagsuot ng aking maskara. Ako'y magmumuro yun habang ako'y nakakalasad ka. Ito'y nagsasakripisyo ako hindi lang sa sarili ko, kundi para sa uh, pamilya ko. Hindi, hindi ako nakakaano ng pagod, something uh, in it. Inip hanggang malakas ako, hanggang kaya ko. At bigyan pa rin ako ng Diyos na malusog na katawan at mahabang buhay. Dederet ako ito. Weaving is a skill that has been passed on through the years by the people of Marinduque because of the abundance of the buli or the buri palm and raffia that grow in their areas. These leaves become staple materials in the weaving of the Marindukenius. Now let's proceed to the arts and crafts of Romblon. Romblon is known as the marble country because all the islands comprising the province have marble. Quarries the process of getting marbles. On these islands, produce raw marble for sculpture and construction purposes. However, before the discovery of these marbles, Romblon had been famous for its traditional weaving and basketry. Handicrafts such as beautifully woven mats and bags are major home industry for their women. Now let's talk about the arts and crafts of Palawan. One of the most important ancient artifacts from the Philippines is the Manungo Char. The vessel is the secondary burial jar that served as container for the exhumed remains for the deceased. The upper portion of the jar as well as the cover is incised with curvilinear scroll designs and painted with natural iron or hermatite. On the top of the jar cover is the boat on a voyage to the afterlife. And another art and fact of the Palawan is the tingkup. It's one of the unique heritage crafts which are original in Palawan. It is a cone-shaped colander harvest basket which is made of hard strip bamboo. These baskets are usually made of blackened and natural bamboo which make the design stand. Now let's have our activity 3. Bring me, send me. Choose one of the following. Submit a small figurine or any object made up of a marble. You may send a selfie with a figurine to your Mape GC. Now let's proceed to the arts and crafts of Visayas, also known as the Visayan Group of Islands. Visayas is a collection of large and small islands in the central Philippines. The seven main islands are Bohol, Cebu, Leyte, Masbate, Negros, Panay, and Samar. Now let's start with the Iloilo. Iloilo is tagged as the textile capital of the Philippines. It's known in weaving patajo, a native tube wrapped around piece of cloth, worn by women as a skirt and is usually paired with kimuna. This hablun or hand-woven fabric used for clothes is distinctly elongo in color and character. It is often colorful and features geometric designs. It is traditionally made of locally made fibers such as piña, abaca, and cotton. Now let's proceed to Aklan. Piña weaving is an old age tradition in Aklan, the leading manufacturer of piña cloth in the country, known as the queen of Philippine fabrics. Piña cloth is one of the legacies left to us by the Spaniards during their occupation of our country. This was the prime material used in making barung, Tagalogs, and saya. Making piña cloth is a careful process. Sometimes it takes months before it transforms into a wearable outfit. Negros Island, Sinamay a term referring to woven abaca, 
was the traditional clothing material of Filipinos. This textile is made from abaca twine, an indigenous plant similar to banana. Sinamay is of thin less tissue but almost transparent and far more durable than the fabrics made from pineapple fiber. Sinamay materials are used in making gift boxes, decorative accessories, wall covering, draperies, fashion accessories, footwear, tabletop accessories, and more. For the arts and crafts of copies, Kapi shell from a marine mollusk which is abundant in the province of Kapis, its outer shells are bleached and dried before being pressed or cut into different shapes. These shells are formed into various crafts products like curtains, candle holder, chandelier, windows, and many more. For the arts and crafts of Cebu, Cebu is known as the furniture capital of Southeast Asia. Most of the products are made from local and indigenous resources. The materials used are readily accessible in their environment like coconut, cassava waste, wood, or even used paper. The furniture only uses minimal amount of synthetic products and other materials for support and structure which make them eco-friendly and sustainable. Their craftsmanship is a combination of generation of know-how in handicraft and weaving processes with a touch of the latest methods of furniture creation. For the arts and crafts of Bohol, Antiquera, Bohol is famously known for its basket weaving industry, Antiquera. Baskets including other native products such as hampers, home furnishings, wall decors, furnitures, bags, and fashion accessories. Furniture, bags, and fashion accessories come in all shapes and sizes. These handicrafts are made out of whatever native material is on hand from bamboo rattan, wicker, nito buri, sigid, and other vines. For years, this has been the town's main source of income and earned them the little basket capital of Bohol. Now, let's proceed to some of the festivals in the Philippines. First is the Ati Atihan. The Filipino Ati Atihan Festival of Kalibu Aklan is known as the mother of all festivals. It is held every third Sunday of January in honor of the arrival of the Santo Nino in Cebu, the highlight of the festival is the street dancing competition of the different groups representing different tribes. They wear colorful costumes including the headdresses that are made of abaca fibers, shells, feathers, bamboo, plant leaves, kugun, and sugarcane flowers. All participants are covered themselves with soot, black powder to look like the Ati natives of Aklan. The next festival is the Mascara Festival is celebrated every October. In Bakulud, Mascara comes from the two words mas meaning crowd and kara which means face. Bakulod City got the nickname of the City of Smiles because of the smiling faces of the mask. During the old days, their masks were adorned with locally found materials like coconut sprouts, colorful betel nuts, violet, yellow or red, San Francisco leaves, and anato, more locally known as atsuete, serves as natural coloring. Over the years, Mask designs at present have evolved from plain and simple to very decorative. And the last festival that we are going to discuss for this lesson is the Pintados Kasadyaan Festival. The Pintados Kasadyaan Festival of Leyte is a cultural religious celebration to honor Santo Nino or the Holy Child. It features the unique culture and colorful history of the province through dance. Presentations The word pintado refers to the body tattoos of the native warriors to resemble the tattooed warriors the dancers' bodies wear. Decorated with tattoos from head to toe with beautiful designs and incredible styles. 
Now let's proceed to the architectural designs in the islands of Visayas. How the elements of arts and principles of arts and designs being applied. When the Spaniards first set foot in the islands of Visayas, they introduced the Catholic religion and used it to gain the trust of the people. They built churches that help propagate their faith. The first church is the Molo Church in Iloilo. It depicts the fusion of Gothic and Renaissance styles. The spires of the two towers of the church and the interior elements such as the altar and the pulpits show the Gothic characteristics of the church. The second church is the Miagao Church in Iloilo. Is an example of Baroque Romanesque architecture that shows through its massive quality, thick walls, round arches, sturdy, piers, growing vaults, large towers, and decorative arcades. It is famous for its artistic sculptural relief curved in the facade of the church that stand as the living legacy of a rich culture and illustrates the way of life of the people of Miagao anchored in a strong foundation of Christian faith. The third one is the ruins in Talisay. Negros Occidental is an example of neoclassical architecture built by a wealthy Ashendero for his Portuguese wife in the early 1900s. The design is elegant and the color changes from white to gray and orange to red as the sunset touches the structure. Characterized by grandeur of scale, simplicity of geometric forms, Greek, especially Duri, or Roman, detailed dramatic use of columns, and a preference for blank walls, the new taste for antique simplicity represented a general reaction to the excesses of the Rococo style. Now let's have the activity 4. Look at the pictures below as your inspiration and create your own rhythm design on the jars below using complementary colors. Activity 5 is your performance task, 100 points, 70% of arts grade. Make your own mask design and embellish mask using colorful beads. Wear the mask and picture yourself wearing it and send it to via messenger. Activity 6. Jumbled Letter Directions Look at the pictures of artworks from Mima Rupa and the Visayas group of islands. Arrange the jumbled letters to form a meaningful word to identify the name of the province of its origin. Put your answer on another sheet of paper. Don't forget to write your name, section, number, and FB account. And now, we are done with our second quarter arts lesson. And hope you learned a lot class. Bye-bye!